Hey everyone, since it's day 10 and we're supposed to be leaving tomorrow, Frank and I thought we would do a special question and answer session because we've received questions from all over the world. Most of them are directed to Frank, some of them are directed to me, but um, since we've kind of made up after the red thread poison pen note debacle, we are with BFFs again. Uh, before we start with the questions, I wanted to thank the person, whoever sent this incredibly high quality, lovely bamboo back scratcher. How, how did they know that I always love to have a back scratcher in the house or the hotel room or even um, solitary confinement uh, room 335? So thank you so much. That's a, that's a especially good bit of kit, that is. Okay. So without further ado, we're gonna start with these questions. Frank, you ready? Wait. Yeah, Frank says he's ready, okay. So these are some questions that I have noted down um, from the hundreds we've received. Okay, I did vet them. I, I, I redacted, deleted some of the more offensive ones. Frank, I'm protecting you, baby, okay? Don't complain. First question to Frank, Frank, did you watch Harry and Meghan's interview, which aired on the on ITV last night? Okay, yeah. Frank's asked me if that's all right to to um, voice up his his answers because he's a little bit he's a little bit short of a voice box at the moment since he's made of cardboard. Okay. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. Oh. Okay. Okay. Frank said um, to whoever wrote that question. Um, thank you so much for it. And um, he says that he would have watched the Meghan and Harry interview, but we were in 1985, having traveled back in time in the DeLorean, and we were at the Live Aid concert last night. <clears throat> but he said that he's thinking tonight, not only to travel back in time again, but to go to Oprah's house and be there with Har Harry and Meghan when they actually do their interview. I think that's a good idea, Frank. Okay, so... That's one question to Frank. Next one. I can't even read my writing. Um, okay, here. What's the food been like? And that's a question to us both. So I'll go first. The food here at the Holiday Inn Heathrow, room 335, is pretty damn dire. Luckily, I went to British boarding school in the 1980s. So I am I'm kind of a machine that can digest and live on the most deplorable food. Um, having said that, we are, I am, we are incredibly grateful to everyone who sent us fantastic, yummy food, some of it from Fortnum and Mason, others, um, from all kinds of fantastic places. So thank you so much. Um, when you're between, when you're behind enemy lines like this, a little bit of fancy fare goes a long way. Now, Frank, what do you have to say about that? Oh, okay. That's pretty simple. Frank says because he's made of cardboard, he's not eating as much as he could be eating, but he's hoping that his his um, newly improved version, when we get out of here, will have intestines and a stomach and other bits of the alimentary canal. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. Great. Question three. Would, would I ever stay in Holiday Inns again? Oh, God, help us. Listen, I don't want to diss Holiday Inn. Holiday Inn is a noble and honourable and rather godforsaken, tired brand. There is no holiday at the Holiday Inn. I've said that before. There's not really any inn at the Holiday Inn. Um, I'm very concerned <laughs> that the only way they can get people to come to the Holiday Inn, Heathrow, is by overcharging them massively, number one, 170 pounds a day, and then um, arresting them if they step into the corridor, which is what's happening here. So that does worry me. It does worry me. It worries me that Holiday Inn, it, it's, it's existing strategy to keep guests locked up, not even 23 hours a day, but 24 hours a day. I've not been out of this room for more than 10 days now. Not even into the corridor, because I will be arrested. And the windows are sealed shut. And all the air that's coming through the vent, I guess, is coming from all the other COVID 
potential COVID contagion, contagious people with contagion in the other rooms. So that, that worries me. Um, uh, the next question, what, ah, what tips do we have for enforced quarantine? Frank, do you want to go first on this? Okay, I'm just here. Oh, mm -hmm. right. Good one, Frank. Frank's major tip for enforced quarantine is make sure you're locked up with someone you can handle being locked up with and not, oh, Frank, mm, okay, all right. And not some, what he said, psychotic, crazy, unstable writer who has an over, over what? Oh, overwhelming sense of imagination. Okay, Frank, thanks for that. And my opinion is, if you get locked up in enforced quarantine like this, stay on the bright side of things. Try to, as I said early on, try to treat every day as a new adventure. Enjoy yourself. And keep thinking how lucky you are because other people, even people out there in the corridor, have far less fun than, you know, Frank and I have been having in here. So we're all, we're guns blazing. We're, we're, we're enthusiastic and, and we're all upbeat. Question five, can you say something about sanity and sanity levels being in enforced quarantine? Um, Frank, what do you want to go first? Okay. Oh, yeah. Interesting. Okay, Frank says, some people who come into enforced quarantine and if they've got an overly active sense of imagination, they imagine, um, they imagine invented characters. And Frank doesn't know if that's a, s a stable, sane thing to be doing. Okay, Frank, but look at yourself, okay? Okay? Huh? Huh? And my opinion is, if you come into enforced quarantine like this, as I said on day three, four, five, I don't know, your imagination is more important than having a hot shower, even having food or water. Your imagination is this extraordinary tool. It is the default setting of humanity. It is the difference between getting out <laughs> I was going to say getting out alive or with your marbles all intact and not getting out at all. Your imagination is the most extraordinary gift you possess. Use it, harness it, embrace it and treat it with the awe it deserves. This one's to Frank. What's the worst thing you can say about Tahir? Oh, please. Thanks for that. Let me just listen. Oh. Thanks, Frank. Frank says, I'll talk to you later about that. Frank says, Tahir never stops being a pain in my backside. Frank, you don't have a backside, okay? You don't have an alimentary canal, so you cannot have a backside. Uh, so he says, I'm a pain in his backside and I never stop talking. <laughs> and I didn't, he also says, I didn't know how to use the controls of the flux capacitor. Frank, it was my first time, okay? Today, you're not a backseat driver. Today, if we use it again, you drive. I'll be the backseat driver. And I haven't been asked this, but I'm going to tell you what I think about Frank. Yeah, Frank, I'm allowed to do this. Frank is, he's got no imagination. That's the thing about Frank. He's cardboard. He's got, he's got his lovely beard and felty hat there. But um, he has no imagination, not like me. Yeah, Frank, that's true. I have to say it. Next, will Frank, will Frank write a book about his experiences? Okay, I'll just ask him. Frank, will you write a book? Oh, okay. Really? Okay. Frank says he's already written a book and it'll be published with Simon, by Simon Schuster in the spring and it is called Frank I Am. Oh, so your label here, I understand. Okay. His label, he's saying, is the title of his book and he's doing pre publication publicity right now. Good for you, Frank. You learn fast. You learn from the best. 
Um, next question, will we be traveling companions in the future? Well, I'm hoping if we can get the DeLorean up and running tonight, we will be traveling companions tonight. We're going back to 2036 because it had its downsides, but it's also got something incredible going on. Incredible, right? Yeah. And Frank met a girl there that he likes. All right, all right, I won't talk about it. Um, he met a girl who he thinks is magical. She's magical. Um, but more about that another time. I'm hoping that even once we've got out of here and we've regained our lives, I'm hoping that Frank will not disappear, like vanish like a soap bubble, because he is linked to this room and to my imagination. Frank, I'm hope I know you're looking worried, my friend. I'm hoping that won't happen. But whatever happens, um, you will not escape us. Send you all big, big hugs from room 335, the Holiday Inn Hotel Heathrow, finest dining and accommodation um, experience this side, this side of the Heathrow flight path. Big, big hugs to you all.